Very good morning to all of you. I will be talking about innovations in tuberculosis diagnostics. Uh, before uh, we dive into the topic, I would quickly uh, introduce you to our organization. So uh, FIND was established in 2003, and over a period of time, you, we have grown significantly. So we are engaged in eight health programs and 14 cross-cutting work streams. Uh, FIND is a WHO collaborating center for lab strengthening and diagnostic technology evaluation. So currently, we are working uh, with 197 partners in 63 countries. So over a period of time, since 2007, uh, seven, FIND has supported development of 30 diagnostic products uh, across various health programs. And out of these 37 diagnostic products, 13 are new innovative TB diagnostic tools. Now why such a strong emphasis on diagnosis of TB? Because diagnosis seems to be a weakest link in a TB cascade of care. So in spite of having good WHO endorsed uh, diagnostic tools, since many TB and drug resistant TB cases go undiagnosed. Why? Because existing tools are not fit for purpose. Many diagnostic tests, they lack adequate sensitivity and specificity, particularly in the people living with HIV in general and in individuals with the extra pulmonary TB. The another important thing is nearly 70% of the patient, they initiate their care at the community or the primary health level where there is no capacity for diagnosis. And symptom-based screen, they can mix 50% of the TB cases. And there are various other issues uh, which actually make the diagnosis of TB difficult. So at this background, Pai et al, they published a very good paper and uh, they describe actually seven interlinked transitions to close or to minimize these diagnostic gaps. So what they recommended? They recommended replace microscopy with molecular testing, uh, more decentralization testing using multi uh, disease platforms which can diagnose various other diseases, focus on non-sputum samples, um, uh, then focus of affordable point of care testing at the community level at the lower cost and increase the size of testing so that <laughs> and work with the local manufacturer to reduce the overall expenses. So based on these strategies, FIND actually collaborated with WHO and to de develop and update the target product profiles in new diagnostics. So we tried to define the optimal and minimal performance and operational characteristics. You can see various types of tests which are available in TB under various strategies and various products they are at the different levels of development. So we are going to discuss all those things in detail now. Starting with the screening test. So uh, in the recent years, where various CAT softwares are there in the market. Now this software, they actually, uh, they interpret the digital X-rays with the help of artificial intelligence uh, and they give us the abnormality score. And many times these abnormality scores, they are as good as the experienced radiologist. Now these softwares are also compatible with portable and ultra portable X-ray machines and therefore diagnosis can reach to the remote areas with the limited resources. Uh, though it is recommended by WHO to assist uh, <laughs> uh, the X-rays, uh, but it is not yet fully scaled up by many countries in their screening programs. The high cost of ultra portable chest X-ray devices could be the barrier. Now you can see this uh, on this slide. You can see various uh, CAD software which are certified already available in the market. Some are pending for certification and some are under development. WHO has already published the guidelines and the website which is there. You can see all the details of that. So though this field is rapidly growing, there are very limited evaluation studies. And few are them are listed over here. The Colleen et al actually conducted a very good evaluation of 12 CAD software. And what he reported is only 50% of these softwares are superior to radi radiologists, not all. And then other uh, limitations are uh, the people with the past history of TB we still need to work over there uh, for the alternative threshold. And feasibility assessment and the cost evaluation studies are still required. Now coming to AI powered medical devices, this include point of care ultrasound, digital stethoscopes and cuff apps. So all these are at the early stage of evaluation and the major limitation with the digital uh, thetoscopes and cuff app is they are uh, measuring the respiratory symptom which is cuff. So not useful in detecting the subclinical TB or extra pulmonary TB. 
Now this is a simple uh, cost effective and well known test C reactive protein. WHO recommended this test as a biomarker for people living with HIV, especially when the CD4 count is less than 200 because it is showing good sensitivity. This can also be used as a screening tool for TB treatment response. Now after uh, screening tests, let's come to the diagnostic test. Recently WHO has recommended four uh, nucleic acid amplification platforms with the moderate complexity. The platforms are shown over here with the uh, compatible test which are shown in the table with all the details. So these are high throughput platforms and are designed to uh, work inside the lab and therefore they are suitable to the areas with the high population density where rapid system referral system available. If you look at the graph, the two or three of them, they actually have the limit of detection which is comparable to the culture with the rapid turnaround time and good sensitivity and specificity. Now coming to the test, a point of care test which can replace microscopy. So as you all are aware of, many assays on GeneXpert platform and TrueNet platform, they are already recommended by WHO and they are available in the market. However, still few challenges that are uh, there with this existing um, software. In the bottom, you can see uh, the new platforms which are coming up, which are under development. But when you talk to replace microscopy, what exactly are you looking for? We're looking for small footprint, the lab on the palm, which is uh, very uh, easy to operate, uh, economical, and it can detect multiple diseases, not only TB. And uh, during the, actually during the COVID time, many such uh, innovative tools, they came to the market. And after COVID, they adopted by the different disease programs. So we screen, uh, including TB, we screen 123 such a uh, point of care platforms and 27 were found to be really uh, good, true point of care. Uh, few are listed over here. And another important thing with this platform is that they're looking for the other samples, not only sputum. And the most important sample which many manufacturers looking at is a tongue swab because it is simple to take, uh, is in less processing steps. Now these are the preliminary studies showing good sensitivity and specificity um, against uh, expert ultra as a standard and few of them are really good. And another important thing is they are actually workable with the existing platform. So if work out, uh, the diagnostic will be easy in the patients who are finding it difficult to produce sputum samples. Now many manufacturers are also working to improve the sensitivity and specificity of lamp assay using urine sample. So they are working on uh, innovative reagents and innovative techniques so that the lamp can be utilized for TB detection not only in HIV, people living with HIV but also with the norm, uh, in a normal population. Now coming to host response, so CFID has come up with a new uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis host response prototype cartridge uh, where they use the finger prick blood and uh, uh, they try to differentiate between the TB and the healthy controls. The preliminary results are good but again um, uh, in-depth evaluation studies are needed over here. Now we talk about the detection of TB and sensitivity to either rifampicin or INH. But when there is a TB detection and resistant to rifampicin or INH, in a high pandemic country, we need a universal DST. And here I think the genomic tests, they play a very important role. Why? Because they're more comprehensive uh, for prediction of resistance. We can get information about drug surveillance and many other things. And among also genomic tests, the targeted next genome sequencing is getting more focus because uh, as per requirement, as shorter uh, targets can be sequenced, uh, less complex, easy to work with short turnaround time, and directly it can work on a sample. So to generate evidence and boost this uh, TNGS in a country uh, and to build up the country capacity, find conducted second study. And based on this uh, study results, we published two TB mutation catalogs with WHO. And uh, recently WHO came up with the guideline on use of TNGS diplex assay directly from sputum. So if you look at the uh, assay outcomes, uh, it is showing good sensitivity and specificity with most of the drugs, but still uh, the new drugs and newer drugs and the re new repurposed drugs, uh, here we need some work because resistance is suboptimal, more data is needed, more operational feasibility and cost analysis studies are needed. And more important is uh, till diagnosis, uh, there is a data, but actual implementation of TNGS for the patient treatment management, those studies are not yet done, so we need those studies as well. 
So this slide shows the comparison of genomic testing with the existing molecular test. So definitely more targets can be uh, screened using TNGS, uh, even WGS, and you get more data. But uh, and again, turnaround time of uh, TNGS is comparable with molecular test, but come to the cost. The cost is much more higher yet. So if you increase the batch size, the cost can be reduced. But if you wait for the number of samples to increase, then the turnaround time will increase. So you, we need a balance over there. And another thing is lot uh, huge amount of data is generated. So to manage uh, this data, to interpret this data, again expertise are required. And many uh, countries, they don't have the bioinformaticians expertise. So now again, the um, softwares are coming in which can extract the data from the sequencing. Then they can give you the clinical output. They can generate the library. We are evaluating those software as well. Now coming to the last part, which is diagnosis of TB infection. So again, a lot of innovation is going over there. And uh, <laughs> many types of assays, starting from high throughput automated assays to ELISA-based IGRA techniques, strip-based rapid antigens, and again, skin tests. So all those things are, <laughs> I mean, manufacturers are working on them, and they are at the different stages of evaluation. So now we talk about evaluation, but how actually you work on it. So this slide gives you the comprehensive uh, pathway from the product development to the scalar. So we communicate with the manufacturers. We are focusing on the local or uh, regional manufacturers in low and middle income countries. If our goals and area of interest match, then <coughs> And if the manufacturer has capacity to develop or capabilities to develop the product, then we actually complete all the uh, required regulatory, administrative, and documentation part for the product co-development. Then we help them in validation uh, of the product and uh, conduct the clinical trials. Uh, we also help them in conduct operational research where, where we can find out whether the product is working in the actual um, real field scenario. Then we can conduct multi-country trials to check the reproducibility, reliability of the resu uh, results, how the sensitivity specificity work out in different parts of the world. Then we work on the, we conduct cost analysis studies so that the product will be affordable and uh, cost effective, especially in low and middle income countries. And after that, we work with the countries. Uh, if there is a regional requirement, we can work uh, to modify the product so that it can be easily adoptable. The guidelines can be made at the country level, and then it can be scaled up at the country level as, as per the need. So definitely diagnosis, uh, uh, innovation in diagnosis is crucial. And with the lot of innovations, the TB diagnostic pipeline is becoming richer, better and richer. But is that enough? I think we need to use this, all these in innovations wisely. And along with that, we need to focus on many other factors, like environmental and social factors, host characteristic like immune status, diabetes, alcoholism, and social stigma. And if we all tackle these things together, then only I think we can holistically hold to control this devastating disease. Thank you.